in this lecture i am going to talk about linear systems with uh, random inputs so you have a linear system and when the input is a uh, random signal then how the system behaves and what type of uh, you know, output you will get it how do you you know model the output of the linear system when the input is random input is a random signal so the discussion in the preceding chapter chapters especially the last two chapters has been devoted to finding suitable math, uh, mathematical representations for uh, random functions of time so you have a random functions of time like this then <clears throat> we try to find out a, a suitable mathematical representations for this random signal that is we described a, a random signal by modeling it as a sample function of a random process so the random process may contain uh, the random process contains you know infinite number of uh, you know sample functions sometimes it may contain a finite number of uh, sample functions also it depends on the context so we have found the time domain methods okay to describe uh, the sample functions like uh, mean value of the random process or uh, signal then mean squared value then uh, correlation function so again in the correlation we have auto correlation function and if you have two different random process then you have cross correlation function also i'm sorry right <clears throat> and uh, the frequency domain spectrum so uh, no frequency domain techniques based on the power spectrum so i take a uh, you know fourier transform of this then you'll get a frequency domain descriptions so we had a time domain as well as frequency domain description now the next step is to see how these mathematical representations can be used to determine the response or output of a linear system so you have a linear system this is input and this is output the output is also called response of the system either you can call output or response of the system when the input is a random signal so here the input is a random signal rather than a deterministic signal like in your signals and system course you studied uh, you know the response of a linear system when the input is a deterministic one like uh, e power a t minus a t or cos omega not t or sin omega not t like this these are all deterministic uh, you know signals but now in this lecture and the following couple of lecture we wanted to talk uh, the response of the linear system when the input is a random signal not the deterministic signal so it is very important for us to understand uh, the set of relations between the input and the output uh, output of uh, linear systems which typically we need to work with especially in communication systems so when you are analyzing uh, communication systems or in general some systems many times you will be faced with the random inputs so the input is random no more deterministic signal after all the purpose of doing this course the probability and the random process is to have the necessary tools to analyze the performance of communication systems in the presence of noise and we know that the noise is modeled as a random process therefore in communication system one of the major component would be filters of you know various kinds you may have low pass filter you may have high pass filter or band pass filter right so we need to know the uh, you know this kind of uh, knowledge especially uh, to analyze communication systems like filters
So in communication system, you are going to do a lot of filtering operation. So I have a filter and the input is a random signal and the output is we need to find out. So we like to know if there is a, a certain kind of no random process, okay, which is a input to your filter. Let's say X of T. What kind of you know, random process will be the output of this filter? So what kind of output you'll get it? What kind of output? Uh, what will be the output uh, random process? So that is the next question we should uh, address. So in this lecture and uh, the following couple of uh, lectures, we explore uh, methods of describing the response of a linear system or filter when the applied uh, waveform is random. So the input is a random waveform. So you have a linear system and the input is random waveform. So how do you, you know, describe our model or how do you find out the output of a linear system? So I assume that you are all um, you already fam you are already familiar with the, the usual methods of uh, analyzing linear systems in either uh, the time domain or in the frequency domain. So let me restate these methods in order to clarify the notation. But uh, I know, um, but uh, not, uh, I will not know, make a full review of all of this uh, you know, essential concept because it takes a lot of time. Okay, just I'll touch here and there. So we will confine to LTA systems. We are not going to talk about uh, non-linear systems or time varying systems. Okay, and systems which are BABO. So let us confine ourselves to linear time invariant system that is linearity time invariance property and then uh, it is a uh, BIBO stable okay so BIBO means bounded input and bounded output and output stable system so we are going to consider stable so this type of system we are going to consider in this course now when I say stay stable what does this mean this means H of T, what is H of T? H of T is the impulse response of the linear time invariant system. Okay, you take mod and then uh, integrate. Okay, then limit is minus infinity to plus infinity and uh, this will be finite. Finite means less than uh, infinity. Okay, <clears throat> so we are going to consider linear time invariant system and bounded input bounded output uh, system and also stable systems. So this is a kind of system that we talk about in our discussion on response of linear systems to random inputs. So the input is random input. Let me denote the input by x of t and the output by y of t. So you have a random input x of t and we are interested in y of t. What is y of t? The system itself is represented either uh, in terms of its impulse response okay, or its system function h of omega and uh, the, the h of t is a time domain uh, you know, description and h of omega is the frequency domain description of the system and h of omega is the Fourier transform of impulse response so these two are Fourier transform pairs impulse response you can ask what what we mean by impulse response like you have the same LTA system when the input is del of t the output no this output is called a impulse response and the input is impulse signal the corresponding output is called um, impulse response or impulse output so therefore impulse response is nothing but 
the output of the system when the input is a unit impulse. So it is convenient in many cases okay, also to use the transfer function h of s instead of h of omega. Sometimes we use h of s where h of s is the Laplace transform of the impulse response. So you take h of t and then take a Laplace transform you will get a h of s and here Fourier transform and here you take Laplace transform. In most cases the initial conditions are assumed to be zero. Okay so naturally since uh, x of t your input signal is random x of t has only probabilistic or statistical descriptions okay since it is a random signal you have probabilistic descriptions or statistical descriptions it has nothing else and therefore it is reasonable to expect that y of t will also have only probabilistic or statistical descriptions because the input is a random signal and output let me denote by y of t if the input is you know like a random signal and this is described in terms of probabilistic probabilistic manner or statistical manner then it is reasonable to assume that the output also will be output will also be probabilist uh, will also have probabilistic description or statistical description therefore what we shall uh, uh, what we shall do is to characterize y of t given the characteristics of characteristics of x of t and uh, given h of t so h of t is given and the input is given characterization of x of t is given then we'll try to find out what is y of t therefore characterize y of t in terms of the probabilistic description of x of t given uh, probabilistic uh, no, given uh, uh, the description of you know x of t and uh, given h of t so this is our purpose of our discussion so as i said a linear system is analyzed analyzed either in uh, in time domain or in the frequency domain in either way you can uh, you know describe a linear system so when the input to a linear system is deterministic either approach will lead to a unique solution you can use a time domain approach or frequency domain approach then you will get a unique solution or unique output I mean instead of solution I can say unique relation between the input and the output. So I have a system the input is deterministic signal and uh, I have output when I say deterministic signal let me say e power minus a t or sin omega t like that sin omega naught like that and uh, there is a unique relation between relation between input and output and this unique relation you can obtain through time domain or frequency domain okay so unique relationship between input and output can be obtained uh, by using either uh, in the time domain or in the frequency domain by the same token by the same token you take the same you know LTA system but now my input is not deterministic signal but it is a random signal now I have output and again you can get a unique relation between input and output either in the time domain or in the frequency domain you can get it 
when the input to the system is a sample function from a random process there is again a unique relationship between the excitation that is uh, the signal input <coughs> is also called excitation and uh, system response <coughs> excuse me this is response and the input is also called uh, excitation so there is a unique relationship between input and uh, output that is uh, excitation and uh, response therefore uh, when the input to the system is a sample function sample function from a random process from a random process there is again a unique relationship between the excitation the input uh, excitation that means uh, the input signal is also called excitation and uh, the response response means output however because of its random nature we do not have uh, an explicit uh, explicit representation of the excitation see this is my sample function and the sample function is given as an input to the lta system the sample function and the sample function i cannot describe explicitly okay that means mathematical equation for this input signal is not available okay because of its uh, random nature so because of its random nature we do not have an explicit representation we don't have an explicit representation okay and therefore we don't have the mathematical equation for the input signal and output also we don't have it so therefore one cannot obtain an explicit expression for the response also because after all input is you cannot from the input signal you cannot ex, uh, you know describe or you know with the explicit representation then how can you expect the same kind of thing in the output also so that is naturally not possible so in this case we must be content with the either a probabilistic or a statistical description of the response since we don't have you know explicit mathematical representation then we must be content with the either probabilistic description i'll tell you what we mean by prob what i mean by probabilistic description or statistical description so we must content with this two kind of you know description of the random signal because we don't have explicit representation for random waveforms so <clears throat> like uh, the same kind of you know uh, description that we used to describe the uh, um, random excitation uh, itself like so whenever you have a random signal so that you can you know describe like this not when i say probabilistic description what we mean is that uh, probabilis- probabilistic description is the one in which certain probability functions are specified for a given signal or for a given process okay so prob- either uh, you know probability density function okay that is specified so then you can say that is a uh, uh, that that function is described probabil- probabilistically okay by a statistical description we mean in which certain ensemble averages are specified ensemble averages are specified <clears throat> that means what like a uh, mean variance correlation these are called ensemble averages so if you specify probability density function or probability probability function then you say that is probabilistic description if mean value or variance or uh, auto correlation function of the process are given then you can say this is statistical description so that is a difference between this and that so of these two approaches statistical and probabilistic the statistical approach is more powerful and more useful in only a very limited uh, you know class of problems it is possible to obtain probabilistic description of the 
output based on the probabilistic description of the input. So you have a linear system. The probabilistic description of the output is possible based on the probabilistic description of the input. So it is available only for a limited class of you know, problems in practical in practice. Whereas in many cases of interest, a statistical model of the output can be obtained readily by performing simple mathematical operations on the statistical model of the input. So, so you have a LTA system and statistical model you have for the excitation signal. If you want to find out output, you do some simple you know, mathematical operations on this statistical characterization of the input or statistical model of the input. Okay. Do some or uh, do or uh, no, do some simple mathematical operations on the statistical model of the input in order to obtain the statistical model of the output. So the random uh, the input random waveform X of T will be x of t will be described its uh, mean value or mean square value as I said then uh, by its described by its autocorrelation function or if you take Fourier transform, for transform of autocorrelation then you will get a spectral density. So by this way you can describe the input. And the output y of t also described will also have the same kind of description except for the fact that we might want to correlate uh, between output and input. That means we have a uh, mean value of output, mean square of uh, y of t and then auto correlation function of y of t then there is a cross correlation let me denote by r x y of tau then y to output to input y to x tau and if you take Fourier transform of this then you will end up with a cross power spectral density s x y of omega and then s y x of omega and also you have auto correlation function of the output that is denoted by r y y of tau <coughs> y y of tau you take Fourier transform then power spectral density of the output. So these are the statistical description of your output. So in addition to mean mean square value auto correlation function of uh, y of t we have two cross uh, you know correlation functions and uh, corresponding spectral density cross power spectral densities. Therefore, uh, two other correlation functions we have now that is cross correlation coefficients R x y, <coughs> R x y, then R y x. You take Fourier transform S x y and S y x. So this is what you know we wish to est establish in this uh, lecture and the following couple of lectures. And uh, as we have done in the past, we always start with the time domain and then and then later on we will move on to frequency domain therefore in the next class I will uh, talk about time domain description of linear time invariant system when the input is a random signal okay uh, how do you describe the uh, output I mean statistical parameter of the output in terms of the statistical parameter uh, statistical description of the input signal like um, mean signal, mean square value, auto correlation function and uh, spectral density, power spectral density of the input signal or input process x of t. So at this point let me stop. Thank you very much.